Uh, hello, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Josh Martin here, the executive producer for East West Collective. Uh, in 2021, one of the things that we had decided that we wanted to put out more content for uh, for people uh, to just kind of let them know more about uh, who we are, what we do. And one of the things that had been requested by a lot of people was to know about some of the background of the singers that uh, sing uh, as a part of our, our group. Uh, I guess East West Collective isn't necessarily a group per se. It's more like a collective. I try to describe it to people as a group of independent singers who sort of come together for uh, for one uh, purpose. So uh, we have a song that is going to be released uh, the uh, first, I'm sorry, it's the second second weekend of February coming up this weekend. And uh, that song is called Even If. And it just so happens that the individual who sings the bass for Even If is the gentleman that I'm going to be interviewing today. And uh, it just so happens that he also has done more bass, uh, uh, has recorded the bass on more of our songs than any of our other uh, basses. And uh, I want to introduce you to Mr. Elliot Robinson. Hey, Elliot, how are you doing, brother? What's going on, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm, I can't complain. Doing okay. We're uh, pretty far apart. I'm in Beijing. You're in Dallas, I believe. Yes, Is that sir. right? Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. So we're we're far apart, but it's nice to have this way to communicate with each other. Absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, you've done a lot of uh, the the base work for us, and uh, I guess it would be good to kind of explain how you and I got uh, connected uh, about. Five years ago ish, mm -hmm. I think about five years ago, when we yeah. really were starting to to put things together, and and it was still sort of a, a, a my brainchild, I guess. Uh, I was doing a lot of collaboration at that time with with John McLemore, a, a good friend of mine, and uh, he was arranging a song. Uh, Holy Spirit, come was was the name of that song, and he. Uh, he said, you know, this song really needs some funk, man. And I said, okay. Uh, he said, you know a guy named Elliot Robinson? And I said, no, you know, I, unfortunately, I, I don't know who that is. Uh, he said, yeah, I think this guy would, would be like really, really good for the song. And so John put, put you and I in contact with each other and not just that song, but obviously several other mm -hmm. songs that we've uh, collaborated on, not just uh, Christian songs, but also some some secular uh, music as well. So that's how you and I got connected. We've been uh, collaborating back and forth for almost five years. So yeah, uh, give uh, give everybody some of your uh, your background. How how did you you know get into to music? Yeah, it's been an interesting journey. Um, <laughs> I was kind of I, I grew up close to music. I guess you know just your standard church choir and all that. My mom was the church choir director and music was always around. Like my parents are just, especially growing up, were very much into um, listening to music, I should say. So the whole Motown, R&B, soul, you know, all all of that stuff, funk, even a lot of the 80s stuff. I'm not going to give my age away just now, but um, all, <laughs> all of those genres very much um, influenced me as a child and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, went up through church choir and choir in school and all that, piano lessons and and so on and so on. Um, <clears throat> and then really, you know, it's funny, I didn't really get truly into small ensemble singing until um, maybe junior high, high school. Um, <laughs> my voice changed when I was about 11. It changed just <laughs> over a summer from like boy soprano and just, just hit the basement pretty dramatically. And um mm -hmm. It was at that point in time when I kind of remembered music that I had heard as a kid and kind of the whole bass um, range and abilities reminded me of those, you know, the Take Six album that I heard when I was a kid and the uh, acapella company Growing Up in the Lord that I remember that cassette always being around and the old boys to men and all that. And it's, it was kind of like, oh, I that's that's me now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then over time, just um gotten more and more into it, you know, started a group in high school, started a group in college and 
um, fortunate enough to have, you know, um, got to the professional level at doing it and, and some really neat projects along the way. That's awesome, man. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the growing up in the Lord album from the, uh, from the group acapella. I know some mm -hmm. people don't understand there's the genre and then there was the actual group, uh, started by Keith Lancaster, like I think in 1982 or 1983 or something yep. crazy long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that was a, uh, in terms of, of, uh, you know, getting things kicked off with more contemporary style acapella, uh, small ensemble vocal percussion. And a lot of that, uh, there was a huge influence, I think on the, uh, the acapella, uh, the acapella world. And certainly you and I had discussed that, uh, the acapella company really had some of the, the most uh, prolific bass singers, uh, for sure. you know, for acapella uh, to come through. There's been oh, sure. so many amazing, uh, you know, singers to come through that group. And mm -hmm. uh, a, a huge blessing that I had was back in 2000 uh, to, to tour with them as a, a, a sort of as a intern um, with a group that they had at that time. And, uh, so that was a, th that, that group specifically was a, a huge influence on my own, uh, musical journey. Uh, so I totally can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And also all the stuff with, you know, uh, middle school, high school choir, yep. uh, singing in church. I mean, you know, I grew up, uh, in the church of Christ, uh, which, you know, for some people who don't know uh, anything about the church of Christ, uh, that's a group that has historically typically been uh, all a cappella uh, within the uh, within the assembly. And so that was uh, had a huge influence on my own uh, background with uh, with a cappella. Uh, give, give a little uh, sort of a history of some of the, the different groups uh, that you've you've sung with. Yeah. Um looking back over the years, it's kind of, I guess it's been about 15 years since I really got, you know, started working on a semi-pro pro level. And the first of those I think was maybe 07, um, did some work, some substituting and some work with, uh, Blue Jupiter in 07 and 08, which it's funny. And when you and I were talking about this some time ago, how, <laughs> the vocal music community is very it's big and small at the same time and when it comes to mm -hmm. bass vocalists it's kind of uh very incestuous like we you know they, we just get passed back and forth um yeah you know like tim faust was the bass for blue jupiter five or six years prior to that and it's just that's just the way it goes but anyway right. um blue jupiter and then oh did a crew um theme park thing right out of school for a few months out on the east coast did um wound up working with home free right after that mm -hmm. before they were country mind you um <laughs> i can't even imagine <laughs> but uh but that was a great time and uh worked with those guys we did a couple cds and i was kind of their go-to guy this was even before they were truly full-time but i was their guy for a good while uh joined a group called impulse up in minnesota that acapella is the only thing that could take me to a state that cold um, I moved up there and, and toured around the Midwest and, and all around with those guys. And then, um, took a little break to go to law school, you know, like you do. And, um, thought I was done, thought I was done with, with the road and its challenges and, and, you know, um, great things as well. But then, um, the house jacks, which is a group that I, you know, was a fan of for several years too. Um, they had a vacancy and it kind of just, uh, fell into place uh, that I would join them while finishing law school um, because I'm a psycho. Um, did that for a couple of years after, um, I guess, you know, three three plus years. Had a great time with that. There are other things um, that kind of happened through that relationship and through that involvement. And then since then, yeah. I guess while I was in um, the house jacks, I started a kind of um, labor of love group called axiom vocal that i still kind of do some stuff with the house jacks was um pretty much all original music so i still would have ideas for songs i would hear on the radio and so that's kind of where axiom came from and so i still do that on the side with a lot of other uh collaborations and projects as they come yeah yeah uh, i know i've seen uh i believe axiom has uh a few, at least one i know uh youtube videos is that correct? Oh, yeah. And There's you guys put out, there. put up several. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, they're re- really, really, really good. So go go check sure. that out, guys. Um, so uh, question, who are your main musical influences? You know, who are some of your favorite artists uh, of all time? Mm-hmm. Um, as a listener, you mean just like straight up, what do I? Sure. Whatever. Yeah. No. So, um, it's changed over time. I enjoy such a wide variety of music. Um, I mean, growing up, it was all just soul R and B, you know, Michael Jackson was a hero of mine. I used to have the, the bad poster with the, you know, leather and a thousand zippers and all that. Um, it was MJ. Prince, all the old R and B, I mean Babyface, Boys to Men, and all that stuff growing up. After seven. Um and then a lot of New Jack Swing and you know, Black Street and Teddy Rowley, you know, a- as you kind of move along. But nowadays it's everything from <clears throat> R and B artists to pop, like I'll, you know, Charlie Puth's fine. It, it just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for. I like a lot of really obscure stuff. Omar, uh Live Fook, who's a UK soul guy, big quabs. Mm. It's all over. Mariana's Trench, I've been listening to a bunch, and they're like a definitely a rock kind of queen esque stadium rock. Like I just I pull things from everywhere. I appreciate everything. Yeah, yeah. I've had a uh, I guess a reasonably similar uh, move in my life. I, you know, when I was younger, I listened to a lot more pop ish type of mm-hmm. stuff. I guess there was a stint in high school where I was listening to rap all the time. Which yeah. Uh, wouldn't have guessed that one. Bl- surprise. I know. Surprise. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the thing to do. Like, we cruised. Like, I'm from a small town. You put yeah. on rap and you, like, cruise the court square, right? Naturally. Uh, it, <laughs> naturally. Uh, and then, uh, but I, you know, I, I've changed a lot. And now, I man, I, I listen to so much, uh, like, old school jazz. Like, yeah. real, like, legit uh you know, Miles Davis, mm-hmm. Dave Brubeck, all these guys. Yeah. That, so I like, I spend so much time just, I think as I'm getting older, I'm more mellow and I just mm-hmm. sort of enjoy chilling, you know, yeah. and uh, spending time at a jazz bar or a piano club or something like that. But um, if you could collaborate with any artist uh, of all time, you know, uh, it, it could be somebody who's currently alive or somebody from the past uh, who's not currently alive. Mm-hmm. Who would you want to collaborate with? Man, it, that that's hard to say. And it might be, it might be either MJ or Prince, just because of how mm-hmm. unique and iconic they were. And not necessarily even collab to, you know, write a song together, you know, that I would release as a solo artist, but just to work together and kind of understand their process more and, you know, how they created the sound that, um, oh, yeah. that, nobody had before and nobody will have since just you know so distinct and so unique but i mean oh for sure nowadays there are so many r&b artists that i love that i could just that i just vibe with and that really speak to me absolutely uh well now speaking of uh collaboration uh about five four or five five six years ago i guess something like that you had a pretty big uh opportunity uh, to collaborate on something pretty big uh, that uh, the majority of us will have heard of. Um, you want to give a little a little uh, background on that? Yeah, well, um, I'm going to go ahead and guess you're talking about that little movie thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little movie called Pitch Perfect. A little right? movie. Yeah, so yeah. Pitch Perfect <clears throat> 2, um, and that's right, I guess that was already six some years ago now. The movie came out in 2015. Um, and I did my part in 2014, but Mm. if you've seen the movie and like Josh said, if you haven't, you should, and not just because I, you know, get a couple of royalties from it, but it's a good movie. It's worth watching. Um, and the music is really cool. And I was fortunate to, um, provide some bass vocals for the movie. And if you've seen the movie, there's, of course, you've got your good guys or good girls in that context, the Bellas. And then uh, your villain group was uh, DSM, Das Sound Machine. And they were this German hip-hop, techno, super intense um, group. And, you know, when they were coming up with the music for that and the concept and all of that, one of the things that they wanted, um, A, of course, was somebody that can really lay the foundation 
for that sound. Um, and part of that being also beatbox. We had um, 80 Fitz on there, uh, who's just a monster and, and completely dialed it in. Uh, but you really have to have that foundation that really sets the tone for whatever genre you're doing. So he was on the beatbox and then they um, asked me to come in and do the bass um, just because that, you know, um, House Jacks, we played with a lot of different styles and that uh, style suited me really well. And the color of my voice and the range of my voice, because um, that was some stupid uh, low notes on that. So, yeah, yeah it, was, absolutely. it was really great fun. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Now, you got uh, connected to them through your former House Jack uh, uh, colleague, correct? That's right. Yeah. Through, through yeah. Deke At Sharon. the time, I was with the House Jacks, and um, Deke was very much involved in, I mean, he's, he's the godfather of acapella. So, you know, he was involved in the sing off and in just about anything acapella. So, of course, he was involved in the movie. And so he was, you know, at the table, so to speak, when they were coming up with how they wanted to present this sound and this style and all that. So um, it was convenient that he knew somebody to <laughs> make it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right place, right time. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's it's very fair to say that you're you're certainly one of the most uh, prolific bass basses uh, out there, uh, bass singers out there. Um, I'm, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, great basses, but I am very curious being a bass singer, you've had influence from, from other uh, bass singers. Sure. I'm curious who, who are some of those, those people that you really admire people that you might've taken, uh, you know, a lot of your style from. Mm-hmm. So much like what we were talking about musical influences in general, um, my kind of out, outlook on bass singing is very similar. Just that, <clears throat> you know, I believe in paving your own way with anything you do, but I don't want to say there's nothing new under the sun, but you're always going to draw from, from you know, what's been done. So for me, the same is true. I think my, maybe the goat for me, um, just right up there, right. Uh, is, is Alvin. Like it's, it's just hands down because he does it all. You know, if I, <laughs> we were talking about this the other day and I made the analogy of, um, what was I talking about? Oh, Infinity War, right? Thanos. He had the, the big glove with the stones, right? Um, if I could like think of bass singing that way, I think there's one or two bass singers that like possess a different stone for different things. Like, for example, you know, way back in the day, you had great bass singers were just like had the low notes, woofed them out there, and it was awesome. And that's great. Um, but I think that was kind of the thing for so long that now it's I I strive to and I really appreciate when bass singers do a little more than that, you know, get a little more versatile. But back, I mean, Rodney Britt, Britt Wall voice, <laughs> Barry Carr. I mean, those guys just had huge even, you know, if I go back as far as the Temptations, Melvin Franklin, Isaac Freeman, just guys that had that heavy, heavy type of tone that was powerful. Yeah. That's great. Mm. Um, then you got I mean, you have other guys who just move a line really well. Like if I say like Trist Curlis, who used to be an impact, um, mm. just moves a line. I almost chuckle when I hear him imitate a bass because it's, just, it's so funky and cool and he just knows the right syllables and the right treatment. Same with Reggie from, uh, who used to be an Afro group, the blue, Reggie Bowens. And, you know, um, there are other guys who, you know, I talk about kind of the progression of bass singing. There are guys who, and I really love this, um, have a little more dexterity in the bass range, which is really rare to hear guys in around low C and below or anywhere around that doing tricks and trills and a little, that's really special. And I have to say, um, PDK, like I remember the first time I heard PDK, he, Paul David Kinnamer, for those who are Paul David Kinnamer, for anybody who doesn't know, who started with the acapella company and then went to like Fowler and different things. Yeah. He's kind of a yeah. underground, uh, hero of bass singing i think and he's i love that if i can be like a soul version of pdk <laughs> it's great because he has he has the load but that flexibility and the style is really really cool it's really special oh dude you know? totally and i'm gonna just i'll throw this this in here mm-hmm. uh because this was special for me back in 2010 uh i actually got to uh i sang uh sang with with paul um 
at a, it was at a church. He, uh, he, he came up to a church where I was uh, in the D.C. area and got to, uh, to perform with him a few times. And it was crazy. I mean, he's just he's, he's yeah. a beast and yeah. you know, um, amazing. And so so just not just low. He's just so he's always on mm-hmm. like perfectly on pitch. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the movement is crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and earlier, by the way, for anybody who doesn't, you know, know these names and stuff, uh, you were mentioning the, the greatest of all time for you was Alvin. Uh, Alex That's Alvin it. Chia uh, of, of Take Six, who is absolutely fantastic, uh, obviously. But, uh, yeah, there's, man, there's so many. See, as a kid, uh, I, I grew up in a family that was very musical. My dad... And my aunt and my grandfather and these other people, they were in like a quartet, like a, a mm-hmm. small like gospel quartet. My grandfather was a, a, a really good bass singer. And uh, but as I was growing up, I, I used to listen to these guys like, you know, J.D. Sumner oh, yeah. from like yeah, gospel, yeah. Uh, uh, Southern Gospel, Stamps. George yeah. Yonts of the cathedrals mm-hmm. and these Tim guys Riley. who were just crazy. Oh, Tim Riley. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Mm-hmm. Gold City. Uh, but I used to listen to those guys and I was just floored by by that and so my fascination was always with the 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 great bass and as i got older i was hoping my voice would change <laughs> and it never did unfortunately and so uh I, i've been stuck as a male soprano uh my whole life <laughs> but uh it was so weird man when i when i sang i mentioned earlier uh, in 20, uh, or I'm sorry, in 2000, I was doing this internship with acapella and we were touring. And uh, it was something that I noticed about bass singers versus the, the tenor of the group. You know, when we would be like doing our introductions, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, when the high tenor is introduced, you know, people are like, mm. okay, a little flat. I guess my, you know, like little golf clap. And then uh, then when it came time to introduce the bass, like two words out of his mouth and people like, Woo! you know, it's yeah. like just it was crazy. It's kind of great. So, it you know, I was really always good. so, always so jealous of, you know, of you guys with these awesome, amazing, like narration voices <laughs> and uh, just just crazy. Uh, so uh, moving on, if you could talk to your younger self, if you could go back, talk to a young Elliot Robinson, <clears throat> what is something that you would tell yourself, some advice that you've, you've learned either about music or life or whatever? Yeah, I mean, um, that's a good question. That's a good question. I think it, <laughs> most of my life I've been a pretty cerebral dude and haven't done too many um, of, like obscenely stupid things, thankfully. Um, <laughs> not too not many. like me. But... <laughs> uh, definitely a few, but um, no, I think I would say, um, and this is advice I think I've followed along the way, but I would reinforce with myself as a young um, child or adolescent or whatever, just to, you know, follow your gut and not, you know, not necessarily in all things, but when it comes to the direction of your life and where you want to go and all of that. I feel like um, you have an internal compass. I think staying true to that is important. And then with anything that you wind up doing, whether it is something artistic um, or just the path you want to go down, um, again, be true to yourself and don't be afraid to do something different. Um, You know, like I've been fortunate enough to, I went to law school and became a lawyer, but also was able to have a career in music and now kind of do a little bit of both. And, you know, there, there, it, there's a way to do these things. And even the way I approach Mm -hmm. bass singing, like 20, 30 years ago, you didn't, again, the hefty low notes, that was it. You got, you got a great B flat, you got the gig, like what else are you, why are you thinking about anything else? But now it's just, there's, you can do so much more. So why not do those extra things? Like just because something hasn't been done doesn't mean you can't do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so what's next for you, man? Like, I know you're a musical guy. You collaborate with people. What's what's next for you? Mm-hmm. Man, um, I'm open to anything. I do have a few things in the hopper. You know, I'm always... Um, 
kind of on a on a on rolling basis collaborating with folks. I Chris Rupp, who I you know, formerly of Home Free, um, I've done a couple collaborations collaborations with him recently. He just put out a um, gospel or I guess hymn um, CD maybe last week, and I mm-hmm. uh, collaborated on that. We did Joyful Joyful with a couple of other great folks. Um, mm-hmm. We got another thing coming with him. We got another thing with. Um, Hops is another one I ought to shout out and meant to mention in our your previous question about bases that I hear and I'm like, oh yeah, he's good stuff. Doing a collab with him that's already recorded and folks are you guys are really gonna love it. Um Axiom's mm-hmm. gonna have more coming on and um another vocal jazz thing coming up later this year in a month or two. So just uh you know, really enjoying having the freedom to do the music that I want to do. That's one thing that's great about like doing music a little bit on the side it's uh i don't have to take every single gig i don't have to worry about you know i'm not on the road all the time it's like when something inspires me or if you know you come with me or come come to me with something that's really um a powerful song that maybe i haven't heard before and that i really think it, it speaks to me and it's a you know you and chad and john and mark and all those guys come up with great arrangements and it's it's things that i love so continuing to work on those yeah. things as they come and uh be thankful for it that's awesome man uh well dude uh you know just as a personal thank you thank you so much for the willingness five years to go uh five years ago to to, for this uh, collaboration and uh uh just it's i'm really excited about the stuff that we you know uh that we have put out but a lot more really good stuff coming out uh hopefully in in uh, 2020 once we get done with the pandemic uh so anyways uh thank you brother i appreciate that very much and uh, to everybody out there who's listening hope that you enjoyed this uh this interview getting to know uh elliot robinson a little bit better and be looking for more of these interviews uh we have plans uh with at least two more uh, of our guests or two two more of our singers in the next uh maybe month a month and a half or so so be looking out for that. And thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you Thanks, had a, uh, a, a good time listening. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, man.